Welcome, Shadowrun community! Hi, my name is McDougall and Shadowrun Returns has been released, which led to an onslaught of GMs that came from everywhere and want to create content and they are already doing it and the workshop is filling with interesting UGC. One question that has piled up and that has come on over and over again and that I want to, uh, I want to answer for you today is scene transitions. So you have your scene set up, everything is alright, you can do a lot of stuff, but what if you talk to your Johnson and you want to do some running? You want to do it in another scene. You want to battle and you want to either return or go somewhere else. This is done with scene transitions. There are two ways to set up scene transitions. One way is to take any props that you can find to enable it as a scene transition and then select the scene you want to transit to. And before I forget it, this time around uh, I'm going to tell you about linear scene transitions but I'm also going to cover hub and sandbox scene transitions. So look forward to that. Another thing I can do is I can take this ti uh, thing here, this prop, make it an item pickup and give a quest item. I create a linear item. Yep, I want to enable it as start. And I'm going to do this to show you something. Alright, see you in the game. I have to make a disclaimer beforehand. I just realized that almost um, a very similar tutorial, also a scene transition tutorial, was just uploaded by Trevor from HBS. This is insane actually, I um, didn't think that it would come, that they would be so fast to upload something similar. But well, I just hope that I can show you some things that he hasn't shown you and he will probably show you some things that I don't show you. So just take a look at both and understand it, have fun with it and build awesome UGC. Enjoy! Here we are. I didn't set anything else up. The scene is very basic. I can only pick up the item and go to the scene transition. But what I want to tell you first is that when it comes to linear scene transitions is that it's very important that you do everything that you can do because the moment when you click on a scene transition and it asks you for example do you want to hop onto, to onto the platform you won't be able to come back. That's what linear um, progress is all about. It's basic and it's effective. You can have an awesome scene, you can have an awesome story to tell, but with this progression you won't come back. So feel free, uh, be ready and do everything you need to do in the first scene before you go to the second. Oh, so as you can see here, haha, that frag I forgot to take the quest item, let's get him! Frag. Alright, so I transition to the second scene. But I haven't got a quest item that I should have gotten, or uh, maybe in another example I would have forgotten to talk to somebody or something else. Maybe I wouldn't have gotten those 5000 again. Those are lost now, when the GM doesn't include the way to get them later in another scene. Or isn't asking around so that it's clear that I get it. So they have to get it before I transit, then I don't have a way to do it. Alright, let's kill this fucktard. So, what now? My enemies are dead, but I can't transit. Usually I wanted to transit using a helicopter, but without my quest item. This is not possible. I did something wrong. So let's head back into the editor. What did I forget, you may ask? Well, it's basic. I forgot to pick up my linear quest item. And my scene transition fired anyhow. So I wasn't able to get it anymore. What you want to do in such cases is to have a prerequisite and in this case evaluate if actor has item. And in this case I want to have the quest item. This is important for me. I have to have this otherwise I can't use the helicopter. So I need a linear item before I can make the next, um, make the first transition. So here we go again, and 
Um, for example, like I said, the Deadman Switch to Official Campaign is a very good example of a linear experience that has awesome storytelling and also jacked up a UGC by created by Talos Wind is very good in that regard. He wants to um, yeah wants to bring out the next version on August second. Well, as you can see, even if I wanted to go before picking up that item, this is not yet possible because it was a prerequisite. So. I'm going to take it, my quest item, my mission item that I want to have, because now I can use the scene transition. And I love that it's showing me that it's saving now. Woo, lucky I got the item! Let's get this copter started! Alright! So this time around the enemies didn't spawn because I have my item. It was a prerequisite for them to not have the item, therefore they spawned. And now I can use the copter. Do you want to fly to the hub? This is a one-way ticket. I'm gonna travel. So let's take a look at the hub now. As you can see, I'm having four different scenes. The hub, the hub A, the hub B and the hub C. Which means that I've got my hub, which is the well, which can be s described as a way of using maps differently from differently from the linear or the sandbox way. It's kind of in between those two. I set it up so that I can, for example, um, choose if I want to go to B or if I want to go to C at first. But when I'm in a region, I have to do what I came there to do and have to finish that before this re scene transition takes me back to my uh, to my hu hub. So it's not like in a sandbox where I can go back and forth like I want to, but instead I have some more control. I can choose in which, um, yeah, what to do first, kind of like that. But this is just to show you how it's done. I've not followed this route through this time. What I want to do is basically um, have some goals. I want to bring Dresden as to Dresden as this character, the Corona. And I want him to appear in B first, talk to him there, get the quest or the, the goal, carry the goal over to the hub, then be allowed to use this for a screen transition, go to s nope, go to A, pick up the stool, go back to the hub, then talk to him again, N now he's supposed to show up in the hub, and then afterwards, I want to be able to, even uh, even when I already went outside and it's disabled, I want to enable this again and I want to be able to go to C and use this probe to transition to my next scene. Which would be the sandbox scene because I want to show you how sandboxing is done too. So what did I do? What was very important to do was to have scene variables. I have three scene variables that I'm using here. One is a scene, uh, no not scene, but story variable so that they carry over from scene to scene. One of those which is very important and thanks to Dyslexicoder for um, discovering this about a month ago is to use a scene variable as a string and assign different, yeah, assign different strings. So each time when you enter when you're entering one of my other scenes, like when you're entering A, I have a trigger that says, all right, it's loaded, so I'm going to set the string to A. And when I go back to the hub and it is set to A, spawn A, then, um, yeah, hub last location is A, at center point of transit, and so on. Then um, the character gets spawned in this region instead of here where it's originally being spawned. But I'm seeing right now this has to be on map start. So I'll have to do this on map start everywhere. Alright. Yes. As you can see I have three regions so I did this for every one of those. What is very important too is that even though you get this goal in B. The goal is 
only assigned for scene from scene to scene so when I want this goal to persist to another scene I just have to do it again I wasn't able to copy this over but I had to I had to rewrite it I had to write it again I had to create a new scene goal and just have the same wording that I had before I also did this in C as you can see here and I also did this in A as you can see here when you come to A you have already talked to Dries and you got it so it's not as hidden but I started so that it automatically automatically shows up in the hub I wasn't able to let it show up from the start because you're starting in the hub and then you go to B to get it which means that the goal is hidden here and I created a trigger goal after Dresden so when you already talk to Dresden it's being set to start it again this this means that it'll pop up again but it also means that I don't have to create a scene from scratch and can instead use the same goal again I could have also had a different goal and it could have been searched for a stool and maybe search on oh and before I forget it before I test this I have um, I included some mistakes because it's very easy to make a mistake when you try to create a hub this is very s this gets very messy very soon and this is almost nothing that I want to do here and I still included some mistakes for you and I tested it several times I still I already um, got rid of a lot of problems that were there but let's check it out now before we actually go into the game I have to show you something else because here are two variables that I didn't describe you. I have talked to Dries and I have was outside. Was outside is used so that when I'm using this to transition outside it is going to be set uh, cancel. When I go to C it will be I have a trigger that sets it to true. So when I get back inside since this transition requires it as false and we'll see now that it is set to true and thus I won't be able to go back outside again at least not until I've triggered this conversation and it's set to false again which I can also do if I want to the other one is has talked to Dresden which gets enabled when I have talked to Dresden and I have quite some triggers that are set up or quite some interactable props that has this have this as a prerequisite like this scene transition here so I have to talk t uh, it's it has to be true but I don't have to have I'm not allowed to have the hub stool yet so that when I got the hub stool and I get back out it also doesn't show up I hope this makes sense Let's have a look at our hub. So let's check this. I don't have the quest yet so I can't go in here. This is alright. I could go outside but I don't want to yet. I could go here but... Well... I have a, an item that I can pick up which I'm going to do now. Yes, of course I want this. And I have a dwarf showing up that's not supposed to show up. Sorry Dresden but that is not alright we will have to make that right later I'm not going to talk to him yet because that would you know would be wrong because Dresden is in B as you can see I can't go back yet because this is a hub setup so I have to do what I have to do in this scene before I can go back to the hub at least that's the way I set it up my back hurts. Please bring me a stool blank. I hope this will be profitable, Dresden. Don't worry, I'll get a dog wang I still have lying around. I have still lying around. So, this worked out. I got my goal. Bring Dresden a stool. And since I've talked to him, the variable is set and I can go back. Yes, you talk to Dresden, go back to the hub.
This is exactly the same scene we were in before. And as you can see now I can go here because I have talked to Dresden and that very well was set. What you'll also notice is that he is still here, even though he still doesn't isn't supposed to, and that I can pick this item up again. Because oh my god, I forgot to set a story variable that says, hey, you got the basic med kit already. So now this time around I want to go outside. Yes, I want to. So there's nothing going on here. Well, thanks for nothing. I can go right back because there's nothing to do. I was outside already and therefore I can't go back for now. But I'm seeing the stool here, so let's get it. And yes, I'm just noticing that there uh, um, was another stool in the hub, but Dresden wants that particular stool. I'm quite certain that he does. Can't go back now because I don't have this item yet. I have the weird stool. As you can see, bring Dresden a stool. It's still set because I had started it. Uh, I'd set it to start it from the start. Haha, <laughs> that sounds kind of funny. And I'm going back. Once again, yes, this is a hub. Back and forth. So, now this is the time when he is supposed to answer to me, when he's supposed to be here. And he says, thanks for bringing me the stool. You're welcome, Drayston. And once again, a mad kid, just as he promised me. So, we see the n next, the third mistake in this. Because we set it so up so that um, I'm not sup I'm supposed to have talked to him here, and I'm supposed to have don't have that item that I got here. But it was removed, and so I could go back here, which I don't want to. But let's check it out. This is not supposed to happen. This was a mistake that we would have supposed to be in and uh, to get rid of. Because, what the fudge, you see it, we can get the item again. The scene is just restarted, we don't have any variables that say, no, you can't have this tool twice. When the scene reloads, it's just there any, uh, again. I could even get another med kit now. And, because we entered the hub again, it's not successful anymore, but it was reset to start it because we are not supposed to get back here another mistake I'm just going to take the med kit again you know but this time I'm going to do what we're supposed to do I'm going to go outside and I want to transition to the next scene because it's supposed to show up as a success but wait there's nothing going on here what went wrong oh my god as you can see it isn't set. We can't even see our objectives. So, let's get back into the, inter uh, into the editor and fix this mess. We need to fix the mess. So at first, let's go to C. And we have a trigger for a scene transition. And we have a goal that is set to hidden by default. But we don't have anything that tells us when this goal is successful. No. So let's see. What we can do is create a new variable, make it another string. Let's call it hub goal. And let's make a trigger. So when we want to go as started, then on map load. On no, no, on your round, because otherwise it could maybe um, it's uh, I set it to new round because it could possibly have problems with when the map is loaded and initialized. The game supposedly isn't locking up twice uh, or s several triggers with the same when condition. 
So what we're going to do if let's see or do, uh, do we have a comparison string if story variable hub goal is started we want to system now we want to gameplay set goal status bring Dresden stool to start it so this is this and we're going to create another trigger we want to have a goal success because when comet enters a new round and this time around comparison bool ah no not bool comparison string if the story variable goal is success we want to gameplay set goal status bring Dresden stool to success and when it is a success we want when it is a success actually we want to enable scene transition or maybe not wait when it is a success we in the same trigger we can say that we want to enable it so let's go to prop enable interactable prop it's invisible prop solid 2 that should get rid of that problem back to the hub and into the conversation because in conversation 1 it's getting set to a success. In this one we are going to also set the system, the string goal to success. And yes I know this tutorial is quite complicated but if you got further questions you can ask me at any time. And those are scene transitions they are freaking complicated it's uh, yeah we got a roll with it you know we got to deal with it and in that other conversation when it gets started i also want to have a system set variable string go to start it changes all right another thing was this item we wanted we want this item not to appear again and we want him to not spawn on map start but we want him to be spawned when we have a stool so I'm going to say NPC Dresden trigger when hmm well this one is a map start actually right we don't need this actually because we are only supposed to get back from C ons so spawn C when we are only getting back ons we can just say that he's supposed that his active spawner is supposed to be activated when we get back from C because that's when we want to meet him but this is still set up wrong so what we want to do here is have yet another variable we can have a bool this time hub um, got stool so we don't care for the item anymore but we are going to compare the bool God's tool is false. We uh, so that means that we're going into into A because this is A. And when we get this item, um, I'm going to call this pickup. When 
on item pickup do system set bool got stool to true also we know that we have this mat kit here and we also want to track the mat kit so yet another variable another bool hub mat kit all right so another trigger pick up mat kit when on item pickup do come on now system set variable boo mat kit to true because we can pick up any other items in here this is the only one otherwise I would have to uh, create complicated if sequences so we want to have a prerequisite for this one compare the boom if server variable hub medkit is false when it's set to true we can pick it up again so that's what this is supposed to do ah great I think this time around it's supposed to work properly so before we continue I want to say that I I um, this is actually A and this is C so I was having this to work uh, I was having it set up so that when we came back from C, Dresden would appear, but that's wrong. We want him to appear when we come back from A. So that probably won't happen to you, but it happened to me. Set it right. As you can see, Dresden is not here, but we can still take our item, and that's what I'm going to do now. I want this med kit bad, and I want to go outside this time. Not go to B right away, but to C. Well. There's still nothing going on, so can I can go right back. Yes, I want to go back inside. And I want to see if Drayson turns up now. He's not supposed to. And I hope he stays away. Well, he's not here. And because our variable works, the med kit didn't respawn. So let's go to B. And let's talk to Drayson because we want to bring him a stool. So he has to ask us. There he is. Come on, Drayson. Yeah, yeah, I hope this will be f profitable. So we got our objective, we got our bool set to yes, and we got our string set to start it. We get in here. The item still... We can't get the item. Drayson is still not here. We still can't go outside and we can't go back to Dresden. But what we can do, we can go in here. And we can get the stool. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to get the stool. Wild stool. I'm going to return because I have the stool now. I can't do that. And now we should see him. There he is. Dresden spawned. Maybe a bit too late. So it could need some tweaking. Thanks for bringing me the stool. Yeah, you're welcome. And I'm going to get my special treat. Now, because I have my treat, I can go to C again. But I can't return to A anymore. Because it's set to success. And when it's set to success, we can't go back or whatever variable we use, but we can't go back. <laughs> and he still says there's nothing going on here because it was um, checking for the variable and uh, was checking for the goal before we set the goal to something else. So we should have rather let it check not for the goal but for the variable then this text box wouldn't have showed up anymore and we wouldn't be able to go back which is 
again wrong. But I told you now, so I won't do this now. And I'm going to instead go to the sandbox. Last but not least, the sandbox. When I'm showing you the sandbox, when you think about creating a sandbox, you have to think about the hub that I showed you right now. But just more complicated, more complex and more prone to all kinds of mistakes, of errors, of whatsoever. The biggest sandbox adventure, sandbox UGC right now is Life on Olymp. Life on Olymp by Opifer and whoever has played it knows it's uh, it's really great, it's big, but because it's so big and because it has so many scenes, a lot of stuff goes wrong all the time. So it's very hard to keep track of everything that's going on and it's a heck load of work to create a proper sandbox. So therefore I'm just going to show you the uh, um, absolute basics because everything else derives from the hub scene we had. So I think you are able to do that yourself if you really want to. What I did this time was I have two items that are interactable. I have the spike and I have this door, this building base door. And both of them are activatable all the time. Both of them trigger scene transitions to other parts of the sandbox all the time. You can go back and forth like you want to. Nobody stops you and this is why it is so hard to keep track of everything. Here I have the bike or... Uh, actually it's not the same bike, right? Yeah, <laughs> right, cool. That's pretty awesome. Um, well, the bike morphs between scenes. Yeah, it does. It's a magical bike because it's freaking awesome. So, it does the same though when I trigger this bike in a different scene. Brings me back to Sandbox 1 all the time. Every time I want to. And what I wanted to show you, in this scene I don't even have a prop, but I have a region. I created region and I created a trigger that says when I'm entering this region it opens the scene sandbox 1, so I go back immediately. But what this means does, I don't have the chance to say, hey man, I don't even want to make a transition. It just sends me back. Period. So you will want to be careful if you do this and rather use interactable props. But let's go back to the sandbox. In this sandbox, in sandbox 1, I have two ways to leave the scene. But what do I do when I come back? How can I come back at the right place? In the last scene, we did this with regions. But this time around, I'm doing something else. This time around, I'm using two variables again, two story variables, and I called them 1x and 1z. Because this is sandbox 1 and the characters are always walking around on z uh, on an a on an x and a z coordinate on a plane, on a two-dimensional plane. So what I did was create two triggers, one for the bike and one for the door. So that means when I'm interacting with the motorcycle, for example, I set the int variable scene transitions x to the current location of triggering actor x coordinate. Doing the same for z, so that when I return he will warp me directly in front of the bike. I did the same for the door, just the uh, only thing that's different is when I interact with the door and I'm going to show you how to set this up real uh, re fast. So click on the plus system set variable int scene transitions x right click function get point component int L current location of triggering actor and uh, x coordinate when i right click on x i could set this to the epsilon or z coordinate well because this is an actor you won't be on a z coordinate only on x and z uh, y only on x and z i can delete this and the corresponding trigger is the spawn trigger I set up. When the map is loaded and initialized, if scene transitions Z is not equal to 26, I just did this because I'm spawning in the first time right in the middle of the map just because I want to. And I took a look and the Z coordinate is 26. So it has to be something else, either here or there. Different Z coordinates as you can see. So then I'm going to warp teleport 
The single actor player character zero two X scene transitions X as float a uh, float and scene transition Z as float. To show you how this is done, go to actor teleport mm, yes. Actors teleport actor single actor player character zero not to his current location but to a specified point in 2D X right click conversations I can call up an int but I have to convert an int to a float so server variable X is float and for the Z story convert into float right click on the zero Z as float that's about it let's check it out of course when you say that his coordinates are um, is supposed to be not 26 we we'll want to go here and put in 26 at first it will be overwritten when he's either interacting with the bike or with the door so here's where he's supposed to be and I can decide now, I can freely decide if I want to take a ride or if I want to go into the building well I want to take a ride dum -dum 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 -dum. And I'm going to transition to sandbox 3. I could now do all kinds of stuff as long as I remember to set them up similar to the hub. Not hub A, B or C, but the actual hub. So I need a um, lot of variables to keep track of basically everything. Because as you can see, I can go just right back. I'm now in, uh, in a different part of the sandbox again and I spawned at the right location because my X and my Z coordinate were saved and I could go right back but this time around I want to check the building yes of course I want to go in and once again I could uh, do all kinds of stuff like here for example <laughs> All right, so it was just a test that didn't e uh, actually set up, up properly. But as you can see, there are all kinds of icons. I could click that, but I'd have to have my variables again. So I'm going to go into the region. I was not asked if I wanted to go back because it was region with open scene as a trigger. I'm just sent back. Well, lucky enough, this is a sandbox, so I could return if I had forgotten something. And... As you can see, my X and Z coordinate were saved once again. Alright, so I hope even though another tutorial on scene transitions is already out there, that you have learned something that this was enjoyable to watch. And feel free to comment, like and subscribe. Check out chatteron.com and check our Freenet RC channel where we are talking about modding and everything else.